Hello again, and welcome to another fall sewing video. This time I have a super simple tutorial for you on how to make two different fall themed berets, as well as a basic beret pattern if you wanted to customize it however you preferred. I think berets are just the perfect fall accessory. They can go with so many different outfits and kind of gives it another level of sophistication. So today we are going to learn how to make a pumpkin themed beret for your orangey and Halloween inspired outfits as well as a acorn beret for just general fall and the brown kind of goes with a lot more. So let's get started. To start us out we're going to need half of a yard of each color of felt, orange for the pumpkins and brown for the acorn, as well as co coordinating thread colors. I'm also using some wig clips to help hold that in place and a sheet of green felt to make some decorations as well as embroidery floss in a matching green and a lighter brown. For general sewing stuff we're going to need some pins, our fabric scissors, and a measuring tape. And finally for pattern making we need some printer paper, tape of any kind, paper scissors, and a pencil. To start out, we're going to figure out how big we want our beret. I'm using this one I got from Clammy Heart, which I will link below, and just measuring the diameter of it. So that's about 10 and a half inches. And then I'm gonna tape two pieces of paper together so that they are large enough to fit our entire beret pattern on. And then we're gonna fold that in half, and half again. And then we can begin tracing our circle. So since we're only doing the radius, not the diameter, we're doing five and a quarter. And then we are measuring from that inner corner outwards and marking on several places around the circle. And then we're gonna trace it, trace all those markings and connect them so that we have a quarter of a circle. And there's our beret pattern. And then we're gonna take some our paper scissors, not the fabric scissors, and cut that out to make our hat pattern. And there it is. We're gonna make a second one of those to do our brim. Make sure it is exactly the same size and fold that back up. Then we're gonna measure around our head where we want the beret to sit to figure out how large we want that opening to be. Because I'm bad at math, I'm entering this circumference into a circle calculator and just taking the radius from there. So that gives us 3.34-ish. I'm gonna round this, because I'm gonna do the clip anyway, it doesn't need to be perfectly snug. And then we're gonna measure out from the top corner again, same way we did before. And we're going to make markings all throughout the circle. And after cutting that out, we get rid of that center piece. And we have our brim pattern. And there is our complete pattern. All right, now we can cut this out. So to start, we're just doing a single layer of the fabric, the felt, and we're cutting out our brim. Since we didn't include the seam allowance in the pattern, I'm leaving about a fourth of an inch as I cut around the pattern so that I have enough space to sew it all together. And 
And then for the brim, I'm using two layers of the fabric so that we can nicely finish all of our edges off and have a nice clean final look. I'm used, leaving the same amount of seam allowance as I did with the brim. The center is a little tricky, so I folded mine in half and cut a slit in it so I could get my scissors in there and then cut around. With that little center bit, I'm also going to just cut a really rough rectangle out of that to make our little doodad on the top of the beret. Alright, so here are all of our pieces. We got our brim, the base of the hat, and our little doodad. Now we can begin pinning to this together. So I'm pinning one brim piece together with the flat part of the hat. I'm not really sure what else to call it. If this doesn't line up perfectly, that is alright, we can trim it later. And I'm sewing that on with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm folding our little doodad in half and just stitching over that really close to the edge. I'm not really using an even seam allowance. And there that is. Now we have to clip all of our seam allowance around the edges so that it can turn inside nicely since it's on a curve the fabric is not going to want to stretch in that direction so doing this just gives it a little more ease and movement. Now we can pin the second half of the brim on. So we're gonna turn that inside out so that the seam allowance is tucked away. And then we're gonna pin our brim onto that raw edge. This one is a little trickier to get onto your machine just because you have to kind of fidget a little bit to make it really fit, but it's worth it for those nice finished edges we get at the end. Now we can take this and we're also going to clip this seam allowance. Okay, now we can finish off those edges. So we're gonna take that brim and turn it to the middle of the cap. And then we're gonna use some thread and a hand sewing needle and tuck the raw edge under so that the folded edge just barely covers our stitch line. After bearing our knot under that seam allowance, we're going to just whip stitch along the edges, making sure to catch as little of the front as possible so there's not a super visible top stitch around the entire brim.
And then we're gonna take our little doodad and with a really thick knot at the end of our string, we are going to turn it inside out. So first I am sticking my needle through the seam allowance and making sure that that thick knot is secured. And with the non pointy end, we're gonna stick that through the tube so that the thread is threaded through the tube. And then we're gonna tug on that and if you did this correctly and didn't catch on any of the fabric, eventually that should turn it right to side out. There it goes. And there's our doodad. All right. Now, now that that edge is all nice and finished, we can flip the hat right side out. And stitch on our doodad. I really, I'm sorry, I don't know what else to call it. So I'm just measuring about how long I want that to be and trimming it. And then I'm whip stitching the top closed so that all of the raw edges stay contained within. And then I'm putting my needle through the center of the hat. I'm just eyeballing it, which I don't recommend. I recommend you using your pattern and finding the real center. And then I'm just gonna whip stitch this guy on. Lots of whip stitching, but at least it's easy. This was another kind of weird thing to figure out how to do well. There's not really a good angle to do it, um, and I was lazy and didn't want to go in and out, so I'm trying to do it all in one stitch. This ended up working, I'm just catching the bottom with my needle and then bringing it back up through the little thing. And then I'm finishing that up with, with a knot. And our beret is done. If you want to add a clip, I'm just doing this on the inside of the brim with the comb bit facing towards the back of my head so that I can really get it in there so it's nice and secure. These have holes in them that are meant to be, so they're meant to be sewn into wigs. Um, I'm just using it for the hat. I figured it's probably about the same. And I'm just whip stitching it on through those holes. Now to make our acorn. So I'm taking my lighter brown thread and threading my needle. And then I'm gonna start doing a daisy to stitch, I think is what the term is. So I'm coming up right next to my little center doodad and then leaving a big, a big space and coming down on the other side of it. And then before pulling it tight, I'm gonna bring my needle up between it so that that first stitch gets caught and makes a nice little triangle. And then I'm bringing that down just right on the other side of that thread. And that's basically the stitch. We're just gonna repeat it throughout the entire thing. I got larger with my stitches as I got moved outwards, um, mostly because it felt like it would be a pain to do tiny ones the entire way and that would take forever. So here's some of that. This used a lot more thread than I expected. I got two skeins to make two separate hats and that was just barely enough, so I would suggest buying more than you plan. And there's our finished acorn. Now for the pumpkin. So I made a copy of half of my pattern, and I'm dividing that up into fourths. I want my pumpkin to have eight separate sections, so with half of my pattern and four divided into four sections, that gives us eight. So I'm also 
adding a little swoop, like a little extra space on the edges so that the pumpkin sections have more form and kind of can overlap sort of like how real pumpkins do. And I really didn't do a good job making those even. And then that gets cut out. I did fold it in half to make sure that it was symmetrical and trimmed the excess. And there's our nice pumpkin piece. So then with two layers of fabric, I'm cutting this out four times, giving us eight total pieces. And once again, I am leaving about a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I am just doing it by eye. And we're going to need two brim pieces again. And our little doodad is going to be green this time for the stem. You could also do it in brown, but I preferred the contrast of the green. And we're also going to need one full piece for the lining. All right, there's our full circle. And we're just going to start pinning all those little guys together. This one took a significantly longer amount of time than the acorn did just because of all these extra little seams, so be prepared for that. And there it is all nice and pinned. And then these all just get sewn together. And then for the lining, we're just gonna pretend like we're starting a normal beret, connecting one of our brims to our big centerpiece. And we are also closing up our little doodad. Alright, so now we're going to attach the brim to our pumpkin pieces. While we do this, we're going to make sure those seam allowances lay flat. You could iron them open, but felt doesn't really like to hold its shape once you iron it. So I am just putting lots of pins in to make sure that they are flat and reducing the amount of bulk that is in this seam. And that gets stitched on. I'm being very careful to make sure that all of those seams remain flat and open. It's okay if your pumpkin piece isn't perfectly the same size as the brim. With human error and all of those extra pieces, you're bound to mess up a little bit. And then that edge gets clipped and turned right side out. Now we're going to take our other beret, which the edge is also clipped, and put our pumpkin right side out inside of that one with the wrong sides out. And this will just allow us to line up those brims and finish it all nicely off.
and then I'm using two pins to mark where I want my opening to be so that we are able to turn it inside out. And then that just gets stitched together, making sure you start and stop at your marks or else seam ripping will have to ensue. Now we can pull everything through that opening so that the right sides are out. You get this kind of weird shape. Just shove the lining inside of the pumpkin. And there's our pumpkin and the interior is nicely finished. Now for the opening, we are just going to fold those raw edges downwards and pin that closed. And then that is just gonna get finished off with a whip stitch. And now it's nice and finished. And then we can attach our little doodad, which was turned right side out the same way the other one was. And I am attaching this with green thread so that it doesn't show up on it. And it makes a nice little stem, isn't it so cute? All right, for our little curly cue stem bit, we're doing a split stitch. So we're gonna start off like it's a normal stitch. And then we're going to bring our needle up in the middle of that stitch, splitting the fibers of the embroidery thread apart a little bit. I'm just freehanding the shape of the um, little curly Q thing that's on the stem. And, but if you really wanted to, you can trace it out. if. You are not as bold as I am. And there's our pumpkin all nice and finished. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Um, I really love making outfits with these. I think they both just go with so much. Um, I hope you also make your own pumpkin and acorn and send me pictures of them because I want to see. Yeah, like and subscribe. Have a good day!